In this tutorial, we're going to learn about infection and how we fight it. This is an Edexcel specific tutorial. Um, so the first aim is, can you identify the different types of pathogens, which is very easy. Then can you describe the different ways in which pathogens can spread. And finally, can you explain how chemical and physical barriers stop pathogens entering our blood. So microorganisms are living organisms we can only see under a microscope. And not all of them are damaging to us. In fact, some are very beneficial to us. Um, you can think of us as bacteria carriers, if you like. We carry about a kilogram of bacteria with us, within our gut and on our skin. Also, in one day, we can inhale about up to a million bacteria. So it tells you that not all bacteria are actually harmful, but some are. Harmful microorganisms are given the name pathogens. Pathogens, think of the words psychopath and pathological, things that harm you. So pathogens are harmful microorganisms. There are four types you need to know for Edexcel. Firstly, bacteria, of which there are three types. Here we've got the rod type, but you can also get spiral bacteria, and you can also get round-shaped bacteria too. Bacterial infections include cholera and salmonella. Next we have viruses, which are about 100 times smaller than bacteria, and bacteria are about 100 times smaller than our cells, so that gives you an idea of how small viruses are. The most famous viruses are HIV and the influenza virus, which causes flu. Fungi are relatively larger microorganisms, and they're responsible for diseases such as athlete's foot and ringworm. And finally, protozoans are single-cell organisms. Uh, an example of protozoan infection would be malaria. And those are the four different types of pathogens you need to be able to identify. Now we're going to look at how pathogens spread. Some infectious diseases can be transmitted through water. An example of this is cholera, which is a bacterial infection which can lead to diarrhea and dehydration. Cholera can be acquired when people drink water contaminated with the diarrhoea of other cholera sufferers. Eww. Some infectious diseases are transmitted through food, for example salmonella, which is the cause of food poisoning. It can be obtained through either eating undercooked meat or, or eating certain foods past their use-by date. Some infectious diseases are transmitted through the air, more specifically when people cough or um, sneeze, so little droplets which carry the infection uh, go into the air and if we inhale them or consume them or ingest them, then we get that uh, pathogen inside us. And an example of this is the flu-causing influenza virus. Some pathogens are acquired through direct contact, for example, the infection athlete's foot, which if you touch a sufferer's skin, you can acquire that um, infectious disease. Also, if you were to, for example, make direct contact with a towel, which another sufferer was using to clean themselves, you could also acquire that pathogen. Uh, athlete's foot can cause itchiness and flaky skin uh, between, I believe, your third and fourth toe. Some pathogens are transmitted through bodily fluids, for example HIV, which can develop into AIDS. Uh, that's when your immune system is basically out of whack, so even something like a cold can kill you. Uh, pathogens can be transmitted through bodily fluids such as blood or breast milk and semen. Finally, some pathogens require animal vectors, animal carriers. For example, the protozoan that causes malaria uses a mosquito as a vector. Also, the common housefly can spread a pretty nasty disease called dysentery, and that's by landing on your food and contaminating your food. And now we can describe the different ways in which pathogens can spread, and that's aimed to complete. So pathogens do their damage when they enter our bloodstream, and luckily our body has many defences to minimise the chance of this happening. Our eyes, in fact, produce tears, and inside tears we have chemicals called lysozymes. And lysozymes will kill bacteria infections around the eye, or pathogenic infections around the eye. Also, a lot of bacterial infections or pathogenic infections that enter our body are through our food. So, stomach acid is incredibly important, not just for digesting our food, but killing pathogens as well. The physical barriers to infection. These are physical obstructions to bacteria actually entering our bloodstream. Firstly, the most obvious physical barrier is our skin. There's not much to say about that, really. Finally, in the lining of our lungs or the lining of our respiratory tract, we have two types of cells which work together to help clear infection. Um, firstly, we have ciliated epithelium cells. You can see these cells here, which look like they've got this spiky sort of haircut, but what those are, tiny hair-like extensions called cilia. We also have goblet cells, which basically 
think of like a cup which holds mucus. So this green stuff is mucus. So imagine you just breathe in and you're flooding your respiratory tract with pathogens everywhere. These pathogens get stuck in these cilia and that's because the goblet cells secrete this mucus. So this mucus sort of forms a layer at the base of these cilia cells. The mucus actually traps these bacteria and then the cilia start to sweep this um, bacteria up towards our mouth. So these these get swept towards our mouth where we swallow them. The bacteria then get into our stomach where the stomach acid destroys them. And now you should be able to explain how chemical and physical barriers stop pathogens entering our blood where they can do most damage.